activities. So uh, in part, I like to participate in these workshops. And thank you to the library staff for inviting us. Um, as sort of a uh, practical advertisement for tutoring services. These aren't very long sessions, I understand. Um, and if any of you are ever in a, a position where you have to write a literature review, it can definitely benefit from uh, getting a little bit of extra one-on-one -on -one instruction. So, of course, we brought one of our writing tutors, Erin Carter, along. She's going to lead our Kahoot game. Um, she's a great resource for uh, all things lit review or paper writing. How many in here are nursing students? Just about every, absolutely everybody? Okay. <laughs> so, this may not be immediately relevant to you, but um, a lot of the skills that you'll use in writing a literature review um, can definitely be applied to um, researching nursing topics, um, some of the research skills involved, um, the, the moral takeaway of knowing your uh, subject matter. So, all right, so we've got a bunch of people ready to play. The game pen should stay up while we've started, thanks to Jenny Archer in the back. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to unmute it because I like the music. So, Aaron, if you'd like to take us away, I'll get us started. Okay. So it's going to be a quick five question quiz just to kind of test your knowledge, see where you're at with literature reviews. So the first question is, what is a literature review? And your options are, it's like a book review, it's like a research paper, it's writing about research you've done, it's an awesome Friday night activity. Research in a particular subject, or as a form of <laughs> sentence perfect. <perfect's> wrong. Josh, you've got to be a girl. <laughs> Always a little humor when Jake's involved. <laughs> So no right answer necessarily, um, but I guess it's a good idea. Go what is usually not a part of a lit review? Annotations for your citations, a work cited or reference page, research, who needs that nonsense, or a lot of summary. classes, published research in academia, or the cold depths of the abyss. Okay, what does it mean to contribute to an academic conversation? To understand, contextualize, and add to research on a topic, to publish papers on a topic you don't really understand, to write and publish papers on a topic you know a lot about, or to synthesize and summarize current research on a topic. back up. We're going to reference some of those answers uh, throughout. 
Okay, I'm just going to make sure I can fold those up here. So, <clears throat> okay, that's interesting. All right, so this is all about lit reviews. I saw a lot of you were already kind of guessing uh, some of those right answers, even if you've never done a lit review before. How many of you have done a lit review before? Anybody? Okay, you've kind of almost done a lit review if you've ever taken a comp class, um, if you've ever done any sort of a, a research paper assignment. Um, so what is a lit review? A lot of times it's used in uh, upper level college and graduate research. You don't often see it in comp classes. That was one of those questions that was asked in the Kahoot quiz. Um, not something you would see in a comp 101 or 102 necessarily. Okay? It sounds like it might be something like a book review. That was another one of those questions on the Kahoot quiz. It's not. It's not a review of literature as you would expect literature to be. So it's not necessarily something uh, you're writing about, uh, say, To Kill a Mockingbird. What it actually is, and we're going to come back to this point a couple of times, is it's a contextualization of academic conversation. Um, and a lot of times, if you're working on a larger research project, or if you're making some sort of a claim, um, you're tying in what you're doing with the context of the research that's already been done. Okay? And it can, can exist in any discipline. It's not necessarily an English thing. In fact, a lot of the um, lit reviews that you may write if you're going on to a, a BSN or something like that, um, it's going to be very much tailored to uh, the work you're doing for your major. Why would you write one? Um, that's another one of those questions on there. If you said, because your professor says so, that's always a good reason to do it. Okay, a lot of times your professors will, will do that um, to make sure that you're doing research before um, you're writing it, your, your research-based essay. Okay. Um, maybe a better uh, personal reason to do so would be to better understand, demonstrate understanding of or inform about the current state or of discussion on a particular topic. So any research papers you've ever done, if you've taken the Comp 2 class, um, where you've had to uh, write about literary theories on a book or something like that, um, that's very much like a literature review. Okay? It's maybe a little bit more argumentative. A literature review is a little bit more general, okay? uh, in terms of you're not necessarily saying um, you're not necessarily putting forth a very, I hate to say you're not putting forth a, a strong thesis, but you're not necessarily arguing something. You're mostly summarizing research. Um, another reason would be to ensure you've conducted baseline research before starting a project. That's a lot of times why your professors will assign one. Um, but then also to determine the, uh, the purpose of a project within a larger academic conversation. That's a big con concept. Um, the, whenever you've been asked to do research in the past, a lot of times, uh, I don't know about you, but when I was in comp classes, I was thinking, okay, why do I have to go out and find out what everybody else says about this topic? The idea is that every time someone publishes a piece of, of research, every time someone conducts an experiment and then puts it into writing, um, they're contributing to what's considered called an academic conversation. Okay. They are taking what everybody else before them has already researched, what every, everyone else before them has already found out or said about a topic, and they're taking that one step further. There. All right, so the question then is, what's in a lit review? What sorts of stuff do you include? I've got, given most of you, did anyone not get the handout? Okay, everyone should have a handout, an example, as well as a template. We're going to come back to those. Um, but there is a, an example lit review in there. Um, and you can see sort of what one looks like. You can kind of try to get it to fit this mold. Okay, um, but what's in a lit review? Problem formation, formulation is one of those things. Which topic or field is being examined and what are its component issues? Every good literature review should say, this is what I am studying. Okay, this is the, the narrow scope of the research that I'm looking at. 
Um, it should have the literature search, finding materials relative to the subject being explored. So anything that's, that could possibly be relevant to the topic at hand, anything that could possibly be relevant to the research you're doing, um, that should be explored. Um, so you should be pulling from those sources. Um, if, there's, uh, if you're doing research and you see the same author coming up <coughs> over and over and over again, or the same journal article over and over and over again, Right, that should be a good hint that that's an important um, contribution to that academic conversation we were talking about. Okay. Should have data evaluation, which is determining which literature makes a significant contribution to the understanding of the topic. Um, so there may be research that you come across that isn't as important, okay, but may be contributed to research that, that you're going to be using extensively in your larger research project. Uh, what you can do is you can mention that research as having, having an effect on um, other research that you, that you find more valuable, but um, talk about how, how maybe it's of less importance to the topic that you are in, in particular studying, whereas another uh, research article or, or journal article uh, maybe is more important. Okay? And then analysis and, and interpretation. Depending on the reasons for which you are writing your lit review, this may or may not factor more into, um, into this lit review that you're writing. So, for example, if your professor says, I want you to read um, and uh, summarize five articles in a, in a lit review, right? you may not get as much into analysis or interpretation unless they specifically tell you to. But, if you have a larger research project, if you're just gathering research to make sure that you um, are competent in that area, that you know everything that's come before, okay, in that case you may want to uh, do a little bit more analysis. You may want to talk about the links between um, a certain author's research and another author's, or a certain author's experiment and another author. And what should you strive for? Um, I think last semester we did a, a presentation, I think everybody who's here was also in attendance then, um, on annotated bibliographies. Um, annotated bibliographies uh, are similar but different, right? You'll notice a lot of the annotations that you wrote in those annotated bibliographies, if you've ever done one, um, you can, in, in some ways, copy-paste all those annotations and formulate them into a lit review, which is more essay-like in structure. Okay? So the same things you were striving for in your annotated bibliographies, you want to strive for here. Thoroughness. You want to make sure that you've left no stone unturned in the topic that you're researching. Okay? Anybody who has a significant contribution to the topic that you're studying should be, uh, should be acknowledged in your lit review. Objectivity. Lit reviews, like annotated bibliographies, aren't a place for you to go making uh, a lot of opinionated statements. Okay? Um, so objectivity, you want to um, be fair to the authors that you're researching. You want kind of almost a colder, dis more distant tone to your writing. Because you want to make sure that you're accurately summarizing and evaluating um, their contribution to the field in which you're studying. Careful and concise summary, similar to um, the annotated bibliographies, again, you want to very clearly get across what the authors that you've studied are saying. That's probably a, the most important thing you can possibly do. Making connections between sources, so synthesis, this is probably the second most important thing. This is what differentiates it a little bit from the annotated bibliographies. You're tracing uh, the development of thoughts and ideas across multiple authors and multiple sources. So it's very important to make those connections to try to determine how they relate to one another. Okay. Analyzing those connections, I think that's pretty uh, self-explanatory. And likely discussing their relationship to your project. Here's where it gets a little bit different depending on the particular application of your lit review. If your professor is just wanting to make sure you've done some research, okay, you may not do that as much. 
But if you're writing, let's say you go on for a BSN or you're in a graduate program or something somewhere down the line, um, likely what you're going to be doing is you're going to say, this is the project, this is what I want to study, this is the hypothesis I want to prove in this larger research project. As part of it, I'm going to read all of these texts by all of these important <coughs> authors and I'm going to discuss how what they've said in the past influences what I'm trying to say now. That's part of that contributing to a larger academic conversation. Thing. So, let's take a look at uh, oops. let's take a look at some of these examples. Um, this one in particular, the Thompson Rivers University uh, Lit Review Template. I'm getting out the camera here. I can stay it over here. if you want me to. All right, this tells you exactly um, what you can, how you can format a lit review. Okay, so let's say you started a research project, um, you go and you gather a bunch of sources. Okay, the whole point is that you're not making any wild claims, any you're not starting writing your main project before you've done your research. Um, that you actually start with your lit review. That can be part of that larger project. So this says um, there's a particular four-part structure that you want to follow. Um, and funnily enough, or interestingly enough, I don't think funnily is a word. Um, interestingly enough, I'm going to enjoy seeing that captioned. <laughs> interestingly <laughs> enough, um, it follows the same structure as the, uh, as, as any essay that you've written. Okay, so you've got your introduction, which does some simple introduction things. It introduces your topic. Um, it talks about general findings. Okay, you've got your main body. That's where you summarize the, the bulk of your research. Okay, um, you've got a conclusion. Okay, where again you're summing up everything that you've, that you've talked about throughout. And then you've got your references page. Never leave off your references page. That's a great way to get caught on a plagiarism file. Okay? So very, very similar to writing a research paper. Writing a lit review isn't all that much different. Okay? But there are some little tips, handy tips and guides in here as to what specific information you want to include. A lot of it's stuff that we included in this handout, or handout, PowerPoint. Um, but it relates it specifically to the writing of a lit review. You've also got a handy example here. So you can see exactly what one looks like. And you'll notice that it uh, really corresponds pretty well um, to this tip sheet that you've got as well. Um, this is a pretty formal lit review. Um, it, it adheres to um, style guides pretty well. It's got that cover page. Um, they even include an abstract on the second page. So a summary of um, the lit review that they've done. Okay, You may or may not have to do that if it's mandated by a professor. Um, but then you can see pretty clearly the first paragraph follows pretty simple introduction uh, format. Uh, you see it go through each particular um, uh, source that they've used, they talk about its significance, they, talk of, they summarize what that source says, and they provide a nice in-text citation. Not really all that uh, world-changing stuff. And toward the back, another uh, of the Kahoot questions that you did, you see a nice long list of sources. Um, in fact, the, the, the two-page list of sources would suggest that maybe this is a much, much longer paper, okay? It doesn't have to be, because again, what a literature review is doing is it's very concisely summarizing um, this academic conversation that's taken place so far. So later on in your larger project is where you're really going to be calling in um, the, the specific uh, phrases and quotes and things from this, these sources. Okay? But the idea is that the sources that you've got in your literature review are the sources for your entire project. Okay? you also notice that they don't have annotations. That was a Kahoot question as well. Um, so there's really no need for them in this case. 
you may use your, like I said, your annotated bibliography, and you may rip the annotations off and stick them into your lit review uh, at some point during your larger research project. But no need for annotations, because what you would have for annotations is actually in your lit review itself. Okay? So I want to take a minute here and take a look back at some of those Kahoot answers to see how close we were. And actually... Okay, I don't know if I can make much sense of this actually on the fly. Um, but does anyone have any questions? I think we're getting close to time. Any questions about lit reviews, their purpose? how they would apply to nursing, that would challenge me. <laughs> okay. Um, I would also like to give Erin a, a little bit of a moment. She's been, been doing a lit review for her, um, what class is it? Sociology? It's for my senior research. Okay, for senior research at, over at Knox. Um, so she can give you some uh, practical and applicable um, experiences from her from her time at Knox. So I'm going to give the floor over to you for just a little, a little bit since we're close to running out of time. Um, and you can kind of give an idea of uh, what your what your research experience has been like. Okay. I'm going to make this really brief guys. I just want to talk to you a little bit about um, when Jake was talking about drawing connections between your sources. That's really important for your lit reviews because you really need to organize those sources into categories. Once you organize those into your categories, then you have a better idea of the research that's previously been done, and you can find the kind of the gaps in knowledge so that you know what you want to do for your own research. Um, something else that I noticed on the handout was it, had, it, it says justify a research proposal here on the bottom. It's in bold. And that can be really important, especially in your nursing degree in your medical profession because if you want grant funding, you really have to know how to write a good research proposal. So that could help you in your future careers. Okay. Easy or hard writing a lit review? Um, it sounds really difficult because you really want to have exhaustive knowledge of all of the research done on your particular topic. Um, but you're going to start finding as you read abstracts of different research that a lot of them are very similar. So you can quickly pick out the things that are similar and different, and then those are the things that you're going to analyze in your literary review and utilize to find those gaps in knowledge. All right. Any questions for Erin since she's gone through this all recently? Um, I'll just add that it, it seems like uh, this doesn't, isn't always how it happens in comp classes or um, some of your 100, 200 level college courses. I spent probably the better part of a year and a half in grad school um, going, just doing research. I didn't turn anything in but the occasional annotated bibliography or um, summary of sources, um, all leading up to this giant lit review at the end. And that was one part of um, the, the whole thesis process. Um, so this is stuff that's, that's used fairly regularly. This is stuff if you go out to databases um, and download, um, you know, published research. This is something that's incorporated into that research a lot of the time. Um, I'll also mention I've got some references up here. Um, and uh, these, are, these are great resources. A lot of it was incorporated into the slides. Um, the handouts that you have uh, come from these sources as well. Um, I'd recommend uh, jotting down anything that you feel may be helpful for you in the future. Um, the example you have, I believe, comes from, uh, I believe it's this one, the Library Guides at University of California, Santa Cruz. They actually have three examples up there. I just gave you one of them. So if you're interested in seeing more or reading more about lit reviews, that's a great resource. Um, Happy to stick around if anyone has any questions, but uh, otherwise, um, I'll turn it over to Jenny and or Amy Jo in the back, and I think they've got a uh, review sheet for you to fill out. Yeah, so 
just a couple of things like Jake had mentioned before, even if you aren't necessarily always writing a literature review for your classes, this is something that you probably come across a lot as you do research for your nursing classes. A lot of those academic and evidence-based practice sources that you'll look at will spend some time at the beginning comparing other research that's been done in the field. Um, there's certain kinds of evidence-based practice articles that just specifically focus on doing this type of research and summarizing um, a wide variety of research on a topic just to make it easy for you to find all in one place. So even knowing what the parts of them are can really help you when you're doing your research to identify what you're looking at too. So other than that, uh, we have a couple workshops coming up throughout the semester that we hope you'll join us for. On Tuesday, February 28th, we have a work cited citations beyond the basics APA workshop. And on March 1st, which is a Wednesday, we have the same thing for MLA. And for those two workshops, we hope that you'll bring your questions about MLA and APA. I know things come up that are beyond just you know, how to read a style guide or how to use noodle tools or things like that. So we hope that you'll come with some questions of tricky things that you come across that you're not really sure what to do with. And it'll be very participation driven where I'll really address your specific concerns of that workshop or those two workshops. And then later on in the semester on Wednesday, March 22nd, we have a citing smoothly how to use in-text citations in your writing workshop where we talk more about actually citing things in text and how to do that well. So, if you don't have any questions for us or for Jake and Erin, which thank you very much for coming and working with us to put this workshop on, um, I'll just ask you to fill out your evaluations and then we'll take them in the back as you um, move on with your day. We have more snacks if you'd like to